Neural DSP plugins, you use them, I use them, practically everyone else uses them at this point. They all sound great, they all sound amazing. However, that just makes it harder when you finally go and decide to pick one up for yourself. And if you're sitting there watching me right now thinking, why the f do I care what you think about Neural DSP plugins? I'll give a little bit of context. I'm actually endorsed by Neural DSP. I've been playing their plugins for like three to four years now exclusively at this point. Um, I also have a Quad Cortex, which I use live all the time. I've either done a demo review or a general video on practically every single product that they've ever released. And you can fact check that yourself by going in the backlog of my channel and seeing all the videos there, or you can go on their channel and their socials and see me get featured there a lot as well. So with all of those things considered, I'm pretty confident in saying that I'm very well qualified to make a tier list on all of their plugins. However, I should mention that Neural DSP did not ask me to make this video at all. If anything, they might see it and get upset that I'm making it, which brings me on to my second point that they shouldn't be upset and you shouldn't be upset either about what I rank these plugins because at the end of the day, they all sound amazing. Sound quality and fidelity is like not even part of the conversation anymore. That's the way that I see it and that's the way that I've seen it since they dropped their first plugin in 2019. The way that I'm gonna be doing this tier list is based on one, a little bit of personal bias. Obviously I play all of these plugins, um, but I do have my favorites and I will explain why. And then another thing that I'll take into consideration is how worth it I think it is to buy at this point in 2023. The first one is the Archetype Abasi. Now, there's a little bit of context behind this plugin in particular, and I have a little bit of a soft spot for it. I didn't really get along with it when I first got it. However, about nearly two years ago now, maybe a year and a half ago, NeuroDSP asked me to make a video using the Archetype of Barsi 2.0 update that they just put out, um, which had a bunch of new features and stuff. And the demo song that I wrote for that video actually ended up making its way into a proper release with my song Arrhythmia in March. And that demo song was meant to be inspired by animals as leaders. Obviously, it's a Tosin Abasi Archetype plugin, so I wanted to kind of channel that animals as leaders and Tosin type sound through the demo song, which again, ended up being an actual song down the line. And this is where a little bit of the bias and the personal kind of influences come in because a couple months after that song was released, actually, no, the month later, I actually toured with Animals as Leaders. It was my first ever Australian tour supporting Animals as Leaders. Um, and I played that song live every night in front of them. And whether they knew it or not, I did let them know um, that that song was literally a product of them and especially Tosin's plugin. But again, a little bit of a soft spot for this plugin. So obviously you can probably see why all of those personal experiences have altered my perception of the plugin a little bit. However, given that it's 2023 and what you can kind of get out of this plugin, again, sound quality is not an issue at all. All the amps sound amazing. I do think it's a little bit outdated in terms of what you get out of some of the newer plugins being that you don't get the transpose feature, you don't get the doubler. There's one cab for every single amp as opposed to a separate cab for every single different amp head. In terms of what you get sound wise, like this is definitely a Tosa Nabasi plugin, like almost to a detriment. After listening to Animals as Leaders for years and then seeing it live every night, like this plugin is Tosa Nabasi in a box if you play like him. However, some Sometimes these tones can be a little bit unconventional in terms of what I would typically get for a modern metal guitar sound. Um, you know, there is no basis in Animals as Leaders, so his tone often is very bass heavy, which for me, I'm not a massive fan of, and it's very hard to tame some of these amps at times. However, when you do dial it in and you get that sweet spot, it sounds immaculate. So overall, I'm gonna put this one in B tier. I'm probably gonna end up changing the order of this as we go on anyway, but whatever, it's so fine. Next up, we have the Archetype Rabia plugin. Now, this one's a little bit of a neural release. It has all the brand new features. It has like the transpose knob and the doubler and everything like that. This is definitely the most experimental that Neuro DSP got with their plugins, not only from a sound perspective, but also from just the visuals of the plugin. It's very in your face. Personally, I'm a fan of the more minimalistic sleek kind of looking things like that very apple look that neuro dsp can kind of be um tied up with sometimes like the fortin plugins or something where it's just like amp head simple controls no graphics no nothing like that it's very minimal and looks great sounds great this sounds great looks very cool i love rabia i love his playing we've chatted sometimes um, and it's very cool to see his thought processes and his tones being put into a plugin. While this plugin does give you great tones, like there's no doubt about it that like the clean amp and the crunch amp and the lead amp and all that stuff sound great on their own. However, I think the purpose of this plugin is mostly the effects that you get in it. Like it has the synthesizer built in, which is awesome. Also has like fuzzes and choruses and dual delays and freeze reverb and all that stuff. You can really get wacky with this and if you kind of push it to its limit, you can get some really cool sounds. I don't use it all that often, although these days I'm trying to get a little bit wackier sounds in my production, so I do pull this plugin out sometimes, but overall great sounding plugin with very cool effects. I would put this one in the B tier, but it's just off the A tier. 
there needs to be like one in between them. Next up, we have the Fort and Cali plugin. Now this is based off a of Fort and Cali amp. I've always been a fan of the newer DSP plugins that are based off an actual amp um, rather than archetypes. I do, uh, I don't know what I'm saying because most of the ones that I play are archetypes, but it's cool to see when it's like modeled off an amp and it gives you more of a basis to kind of dial in the tone and stuff like that. Whereas archetypes, you kind of need to use a little bit more of your ears and be a little bit more abstract with it because you don't know 100% what it's 100% based off. I use the Ford and Cali a lot. However, I don't use it for the amp or the cab or anything like that. I use it just for the pedals. A little trick I like to do is turn off everything else in the plugin apart from the pedals and then combine that in your signal chain with other plugins. So one thing I like to do a lot is use the Ford and Overdrive and Noise Gate with Archetype Nolly or any other high gain amp that is in any other plugin from newer DSP. Would I get this in 2023? If I was a fan of that Fort and sound where it's like very jangly, you can hear every single string, sounds great in low tunings. Um, this is almost a no brainer. The Fort and stuff is amazing. I can understand why you'd go for the Cali over the Nameless because sometimes the Nameless can be a little bit too shrill and ice picky and you have to be really careful what guitar you use with that plugin because again, context given, it is a Meshuggah plugin. It's a Meshuggah signature amp plugin. Whereas this one's a little bit more tamed, a little bit more dialed back and you get a lot of tonal options with this one. There's a bunch of switches on the front, like different presence controls hair options, um, different like low end placement of the thump of your tone. Like there's so many things you can dial in. So if you want to get nerdy with it, the Fawn and Cali is a great plugin. I'm going to put this one in the A tier. Archetype Corey Wong. Now, again, if you've seen my videos before, um, if you've listened to anything I've ever done, you know that it's very metal based. So again, I don't use the Corey Wong as often as I would like to. However, that does not mean that it doesn't sound good. In fact, if you're looking for like clean to break up tones, this plugin is it. Like there's almost no better plugin in the whole lineup if you're going for those tones. It is a Corey Wong archetype. Like if you want those tones, this is it. And it has some really cool pedals in it as well. I really like the Postal Service pedal. Um, it's kind of like this uh, envelope filter, like wah kind of pedal. And I'm trying to actually experiment a little bit and put that in front of other plugins um, just to create weird alien sound effects. So again, I don't really use it that often, but it sounds great but because something has to go on the D tier, I'm just gonna put it in the D tier for now. Sorry, Corey. Nothing against you, you're playing, you're an amazing guitarist, this plugin sounds amazing. It is a personal tier list. Next up, we have the Dark Glass pedal. Now, this is one of the OGs. If you've been following Neuro DSP for a while, you know that this plugin, it was one of the first plugins that they ever put out alongside the Fort and Nameless. If you're looking for that Dark Glass B7K pedal sound in a plugin, this is literally it. And it has the vintage pedal. I can't remember the name of it. I think it's like VDK or something like that. Don't quote me on that because I don't know. I don't really use that one too often, but I love the B7K sound. Again, from a features perspective, it is a little bit dated now. Obviously this plugin came out in like 2019, 2020. It is three, nearly four years later. Um, so it's missing some of those like functionality kind of features. But if you just want that B7K sound like this is it and it's gonna do an amazing job. Overall, I'm gonna put this one in the B tier. Next up, we have the Archetype Gojira. Now, if there's one plugin that I get asked about the most out of all of the newer DSP plugins, it's definitely Archetype Gojira. And the one thing they always seem to ask is, I just got Archetype Gojira I just can't seem to dial in a good tone with it. What do you do to dial in a tone with Archetype Gajira? And it's one of those things where like I go on their profile and I look and they're playing eight string stuff in double drop D and they bought Archetype Gajira and then they're going, I don't, I can't get it to sound good. And this is where it's important to remember context with plugins and just anything in general. This is Archetype Gajira. Gajira play in like standard E, standard D, maybe drop D. Um, I think that's the highest they play and they might play a little bit lower than that, but probably no lower than drop C. This plugin was made for them with those guitars in those tunings, they're dialing it in. Um, and obviously the end result is gonna be amps that sound amazing with this. They're making the final calls on these tones and how the amps react and stuff like that. And you know, it's obvious that the main amp in the Archetype Gajira is modeled after a 5150. However, this 5150 reacts very differently to some of the other 5150s from other newer DSP plugins like the Nolly, for example. When you figure that out and you know, get past that hurdle and dial in the amp correctly, Archetype Gajira sounds absolutely massive. This was also the first newer DSP plugin to introduce pitch shifting in a certain way. So before the transpose, knob this had the digital drop tech whammy um, so what people would do is they would kind of 
push the pedal down to its exact value so that it was like a semitone lower, two semitones lower, three semitones lower, etc., etc. And then they'd save them as presets and that would be your way of downshifting or pitch shifting your guitar. However, now there's the transpose knob at the top of the plugin so you can literally just turn down like one semitone, two semitone. Um, it's a lot less fiddly than this, but the fact that this has the Digitech Whammy in it, plus octave pedals, plus other stuff like that, it's awesome. I don't use the other amps in this plugin too often. I'm really always just going for that really high gain 5150 type amp. So I can't say much about the other ones. I have done a video on this, but it was a very long time ago. I don't use it that often personally, but I do think it is a great plugin. And if you're looking for just like a really good modern metal sound um, that's ballsy and has lots of clarity and articulation, the Archetype Gajira is one of the best ones out of the whole bunch. So for that reason, I'm going to place this one in B tier. The Omega Granifier. Now this is almost one of the forgotten plugins out of the whole lineup, but don't let that fool you because again, obviously like all the other plugins, no matter what tier they're in, the Omega Granifier sounds phenomenal. I think this might be the only, if not like one of two um, plugins that actually allow you to change tubes within the plugin. So you can have the same amp head um, but change the tubes within the amp and see how that affects the sound as well and see how it affects like the low end response and the tightness of the amp, which is really cool. It also has the plumes overdrive, which again is like a physical overdrive that you can actually buy with real money. Um, so again, it's just good to have that as a reference point and kind of see how that sounds as well. But again, it is a little bit dated. It came out a couple of years ago. It doesn't have all the new features. It's kind of like the Fort and Cali where, um, you know, again, this, I don't think this has delay and reverb and stuff like that. So there's no pedal section, but if you just want the Omega Granifier sound, um, I think it's actually called an Obsidian, the real amps called Obsidian. Um, if you want that amp in a box, like this is it. I might be mistaken, but I think on Periphery's latest album, Gent Isn't a Genre, they actually use the Omega Granifier or like the Obsidian, the real life counterpart as the album tone for the most part for the rhythm guitars. So I did go back and revisit the plugin a little bit and I really like the tones that I got out of it. They're very saturated, very kind of crunchy in the mid range, um, but still offer a lot of definition. It's not one of the first ones that I pick out when I'm looking for an amp sim, but it does sound great. Um, however, the lack of features in 2023 I'm gonna put this in C tier. Next up, we have the Boogie Suite. So this just came out not too long ago. I did a video for this plugin, I did a demo video. It has the two amps in it. Um, this one is a very true representation of those amps and their real life counterparts. If you're looking for that Mesa Boogie Mark II sound, like this is it in a plugin. Again, it has all the quality of life features like the transpose and the doubler and all the new features, stuff like that it has all of that built in. However, even though it has all of these nice features, the Mesa Boogie sound isn't something that I typically go for. Um, and in that sense, I do find it a little bit restricting for me personally when I go to dial in a tone, simply because this does such a good job of representing the actual amp that it just made me realize that the Mesa Boogie sound isn't something that I'd go for. So I don't use it that often, but again, if you're a real big fan of that Mesa Boogie type sound, like those Petrucci tones and stuff like that, those old school Metallica tones as well, if you dial this in right, you can get pretty much 100% of the way there. But this is a personal tier list, so I'm gonna pop this one in C tier. Archetype Tom Morello, the most recent offering from Newer DSP. Now, again, I did do a video on this, um, I think, Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think this is the first time that newer DSP have ever modeled a Marshall type amp in their plugins. And the amp in this plugin in particular is modeling a JCM 800. A little bit different from all the other archetypes in the sense that in this one, it's literally just the one amp and cab. Um, there is no like clean amp, crunch amp, high gain amp. It's just the Marshall JCM 800 with one cab, that's it. However, in saying that this plugin is chock-a-block full of effects, which is obvious because it's a Tom Morello plugin. It has dive bomb pedals, whammies, automated whammies, uh, delay upon delay upon reverb upon EQs. It's got everything you could ever imagine. I think it's got a wah pedal in there as well. I really like this plugin because, you know, lately I've been trying to kind of experiment and get some weirder sounds in my productions, as I mentioned before. And, you know, when this came through, I was like, perfect. This has like everything I need to make the most up sound as possible. If you want that Marshall JCM 800 sound in a plugin, like obviously this is the one to go for. And if you want all the effects on it, it's just like icing on the cake, really. It's new, it has all the features, um, 2023 listing, personal listing. I'm gonna put this one in B tier. Next up, the king of Neuro DSP plugins, ladies and gentlemen, the Fort and Nameless. This was the first plugin that Neuro DSP ever put out. It was their introduction into the plugin market, into the audio space, and it essentially, crashed everything. This plugin almost put other companies out of business. Like that's how big of a deal it was at the time. And 
it almost was mythical when it dropped. I remember people's reactions to it were insane. You can go back and watch all those videos now because it wasn't that long ago. It was only four years ago, which only shows as a testament to how far things have progressed in the last couple of years because of NeuroDSP. Before this plugin dropped, the options were very slim, I'm not gonna lie, and they really didn't sound that great. They definitely didn't sound like this. Combine the fact that this is a Meshuggah amp head in a plugin, it was a no brainer. This was gonna sell like hotcakes, especially when it sounded this good. And again, if it wasn't for this plugin, like I wouldn't be making this video. I wouldn't be where I am doing this video, playing live. Like I wouldn't be doing any of it. This plugin literally changed the entire audio guitar space, both online and physically. Despite the fact that it's a little bit dated now, it doesn't have the quality of life features. Um, it doesn't have an effect section. Just the sheer impact that this plugin had on the market and what it has paved the way for to what we see today, absolute S tier plugin. Like again, we wouldn't be watching this video right now if it wasn't for this plugin. Sound again is not an issue. Like there's videos on the Neural DSP page where you can watch them A, B, the real life amp head that they captured and the plugin, and you can't even tell when they're switching it because it sounds that bang on. I wanna stress that again, because I feel like a lot of people are gonna take this tier list very literally. This is not about sound quality at all. This is more so about my own personal taste, features, and what you can get out of the plugin based on what I'm telling you from this tier list. I love the Fort and Nameless particularly because it sounds great with low tune seven string and eight string guitars. Like obviously again, context, right? It's like, just like the archetype Gajira thing. This is a Meshuggah amp head. It's the Fort and Nameless. It's the Fort and Meshuggah amp. Obviously it's gonna sound phenomenal with low tune seven string and eight string guitars. That is what this amp was modified to do originally. Yes, I am aware that this was modeled and modded from a Marshall amp originally, but it is so far from what that amp was originally that I'm not even gonna say it's a Marshall amp unlike the archetype Tom Morello, which is definitely a Marshall. Next up, archetype Petrucci. Now, again, this was a little bit of a game changer when the plugin dropped. It introduced a lot of new features in NeuroDSP's lineup that wasn't there before. For example, the doubler effect, the um, pitch shifting, the transpose knob, um, all that stuff was not a thing in NeuroDSP's catalog before they dropped this plugin. And there was no better person to do it with because it is John Petrucci, for God's sake. This has four amps inside of it. I think that was a first as well. Actually, no, I lie. Archetype Nolly was a first. But it did have four distinct amp sounds. It had the acoustic amp with the acoustic sim, clean amp, heavy amp, and lead amp, and they all sound phenomenal. The clean, high gain, and lead amp also came with their own cabs. And one thing I didn't appreciate as much at the time, but I can appreciate now, is the fact that all of the microphones that were used in this plugin um, were a little bit different from the standard microphones that were used in the other plugins until that point. Like there is no like Dynamic 57 and there is no like MD421. It's different microphones in this plugin. Obviously it's a John Petrucci plugin. It must be the microphones that he's using to capture his stuff in real life. So it makes sense that they modeled it in this plugin and they all sound great and they all work really well with these cabs. Another thing that I love about the Archetype Petrucci is the fact that it's absolutely loaded with effects. So this has like double choruses, um, stereo delay, stereo reverb, um, crystallization on the reverb, like weird stuff you can do with the delay trails, phases, flanges, like it's got everything. If you want, again, it is an Archetype Petrucci plugin and he uses pretty much everything under the sun. So it makes sense that this is all in the one plugin. Would I buy this today? Absolutely. Um, the amp tones themselves aren't exactly what I would go for. I'm gonna be honest, like I'm much more of a fan of that like 5150 type sound, which isn't really in this plugin at all. It's more of a Mesa type sound. However, because it's not 100% based off a Mesa style amp, um, for example, like the Mesa Suite is, whereas this one's like, it is about 80% of the way there, but it's a little bit more tinkerable. Like there is the tight knob and, and you can kind of really delve into how you want your tone to sound with that kind of influence of the Mesa sound as well. The lead amps and the clean amp especially sounds phenomenal. Um, so all things considered, I'm gonna put this one in the A tier. Next up, Archetype Tim Henson. Now, this was also a little bit of a game changer when it dropped because it included a multi-voicer in there, which was unheard of at the time, especially in such an accessible and widely known plugin company such as NeuroDSP. That alone is almost enough to make this whole price tag of the plugin worth it because it's pretty insane what it can do, especially if you kind of feed it MIDI chords and stuff like that. You can go so deep into it, but essentially like 
you can get 100% of the way there getting that like polyphia vocoder sound through your guitar in this plugin. One thing that was really apparent to me in this plugin, not the first time I tried it out, but the second time that I tried it out, I actually used this plugin in an old video where I was learning polyphia songs on the spot and I tried playing through Go and playing God and stuff like that. At the time I borrowed an Ibanez Tim Henson signature guitar, the black one or the gold hardware. Very cool guitar, love the bridge on that guitar. The Goto 510 was amazing, but that guitar combined with the goat preset from Tim himself in this plugin, like it was uncanny how real it sounded and how good it sounded and how replicable it sounded compared to the actual album tone. Like it was practically one-to-one -one. and it makes sense because I'm sure that the plugin that Tim was playing through and modeling that whole tone and preset after at the time was that exact guitar that I had in my hand. So that combined with the actual plugin itself, um, it sounded one-to-one, -one. like I was blown away. Again, this plugin includes a bunch of amps, cabs, effects, whatever, just like all the other Archetype and Neural DSP plugins. And it might seem really versatile for that reason. However, I think it's so dialed into that Tim Henson sound, which again, is not a bad thing. It literally is an Archetype Tim Henson plugin. Um, but I'm thinking if you're just more of like a general user and you just wanna get a lot of different tones out of a plugin, you wanna get the most bang for your buck, I probably wouldn't get this. If you're a general user and you wanna go from everything from like acoustic to like, super duper eight string heavy like you can get there with this plugin you can get 80 percent of the way there especially on the cleaner side but when you start getting into that high gain stuff there are plugins that new dsp have released that do that better than this one so all things considered um 2023 my personal bias i'm gonna pop this one in b tier next up we have archetype nolly now if you know neural dsp this needs absolutely no introduction whatsoever this is V1, right? Has the clean amp, crunch amp, that 5150 third amp that everyone knows and loves, as well as like that modified lunchbox head lead amp, which is really sick as well. Separate cabs for all of those amps, like this plugin in terms of archetype and the features that you get has it all. It's not as effects heavy as some of the newer offerings. For example, it doesn't have flanges and fuzzes and all that stuff, but it gives you delays, reverbs, two different types of overdrives, a compressor. Like it gives you everything that you need to get all the way from the super jangly clean tones to the really, really heavy high gain tones. This is one of my most used plugins from the Neural DSP offering. Like I pretty much use this all the time, especially if it's for like a higher gain context. And one thing that I love using this plugin for in particular is just like general textural sounds and like pre-delay leads and post-rock leads and stuff like that. There's literally presets built within this um, plugin from Nolly himself that kind of catered to that sound perfectly and it's all over my songs you can hear it in practically every single one this was a big deal when it dropped it's still a big deal now and if you're just like looking for a newer dsp plugin to kind of cover all bases very well i think this is one of the best ones you can get so for that i'm going to put it in the s tier Next up, we have the Fortin NTS plugin. Now, again, this is a little bit forgotten. Um, it's definitely my least used plugin out of the, all the new DSP plugins, but it sounds great. In terms of features, again, it is a little bit outdated. It came out a couple years ago. It hasn't had an update in a while. Gives you all those Fortin pedals, just like the Kali and the Nameless. Um, it's a perfect replication of the Fortin NTS amp it's real life counterpart, which I'm not gonna say the name for, but again, it just lacks some features. I don't use it that often. Um, so for the purposes of this video, I'm gonna put it in D tier. And I'm gonna stress again that it's not because it sounds bad, it's just for everything else that I mentioned. I'm gonna go backwards now because I like this end of it a little bit better. I'm gonna save that for the end. So let's go to the Tone King Imperial. Now, again, very similar to the Corey Wong, this is a metal channel. I play metal, I play seven string, eight string guitars. So this isn't the first thing that I go for when I'm trying to dial in a high gain metal tone. It's pretty much impossible to do it on this plugin. However, for clean tones, I am a huge fan. I think it might be like the cleanest of the clean that you can get out of all of these plugins. Sounds absolutely phenomenal and it really does a good job of getting that kind of old school clean tone sound, very open sounding with a lot of headroom. However, I don't use it that often. It doesn't take away from how good it sounds because it sounds great. I'm actually gonna put this one in the C tier because I think if you're looking for clean tones in particular, like, you know, uh, R&B, kind of like Mateus Asado type playing tones, I think he actually did a demo for this plugin in particular, which makes sense. But if that's what you're going for, like, this is sick. Next up, the Soldano plugin. Now, this is cool because Soldanos are very expensive in real life. I think an actual Soldano head is like, four five thousand dollars us which is what like seven and a half eight thousand dollars australian or something like that um it's pretty bonkers i actually use this plugin in particular on my song pulse 
all the other songs that have heavy guitars that I've done so far have been the Archetype Nolly 5150 with some different pedals and stuff in the front of it. But the main bulk of the amp was obviously the 5150 in the Nolly. However, for Pulse in particular, I just wanted to try something a little bit different just to see what I could get. And I really enjoyed the Soldano plugin. I did a video on this when it first dropped. I do like the overdrives in this plugin. I like the more modern one. They actually have an overdrive that has like a high boost and a little bit more kind of low end that gets cut out of it when you use it, which is great for modern applications, but it also kind of caters to that old school style, you know, a little bit of a warmer kind of overdrive, not cutting out so much low end, you know, like standard E, drop D, stuff like that. But you can run seven strings and stuff through this Soldano amp. No matter how old the Soldano amp is, this plugin gives you all the features to kind of make sure it sounds great going through this amp and this cab. It's simple on effects. It just has like the delay and the reverb. It doesn't have like the quality of life features like the transpose or the doubler and stuff like that. Because again, this is a little bit of an older release. This is just Soldano amp. Like it's just amp and cab. Um, you can't choose from different cabs. However, again, I do kind of like that a little bit better because it's a more true representation of what the amp actually is. All things considered, I'm going to pop the Soldano in B tier. Next up, we have the Neuro DSP Parallax. Now this is the second um, of the two base offerings that Neuro DSP offer as plugins. I could count the Corey Wong as a third one, but it is just, it has bass stuff in there, but it's mainly focused on guitar. So I'm gonna leave that out. So the two being the Dark Glass and the Parallax, the Parallax is the second one, the most recent one that they released, which is still a couple years ago at this point. I love the Neural DSP Parallax plugin. It is my most used bass plugin by far. Um, I love the distortion sounds on it. I love just how full on it is. Like it is very unforgiving. You can dial this in so that your bass tone is almost fuzz. Like it's very crazy how far you can dial it in. In terms of getting like modern metal bass tones, I don't think there's a plugin that does it better, especially with this one because it has that low end region. It's like kind of split into three bands. It has the lows, the mids and the highs, but the lows don't get put through the amp at all. It's just low end compression and you can kind of pick that cutoff point with the low cut knob. Absolute like game changer, so simple. But if you just want like a all in the box bass tone, like this kind of has everything in it. You don't really need to do the whole trick of like splitting your bass DI into three separate parts because this does that within the plugin itself and it's gonna sound great no matter what. I find that when I use this plugin, things just sit in the mix so well. I don't really have to dial it in that much. Obviously there's like a little bit of post EQ because it is so gain heavy. Like there is a lot of harmonics and stuff that get pushed out. But again, like that's very typical anyway. I do the same thing on guitars. So if you just want like a modern metal bass tone that sounds insane, whether you want it to be like that super scooped kind of cleaner finger picked um, death metal bass tone, or if you want it to be like all out guns blazing, super mid range heavy, almost honky style progressive metal tones, like this can do it all and it sounds phenomenal. I think that this is very similar to the Fort and Nameless where as I was mentioning, like it pretty much changed everything. Um, even though the B7K released before, like I haven't seen many other plugin companies release any sort of like bass distortion plugins since this drop because I don't think people use any other one apart from this one at this point. So for that reason, I'm gonna put this one in S tier. And last but absolutely not least, we have the Pliny plugin. Now, very mixed feelings about this plugin because I absolutely love it to death. Like this is one of my favorite newer DSP plugins. I think it's the first archetype they ever put out. And I think it's like their most bought, most downloaded plugin to date. On one hand, I absolutely love how this plugin sounds. Obviously sound again is not an issue, but I also also love how inspired I get when I open this plugin. It's no secret that I absolutely adore Pliny. I adore him, his work, his music. I'm a big fan, very big influence on me. So I'm gonna try and keep that out as much as I can. But that aside, like when I open this plugin, I'm playing things that I would never play typically if I was to open up any other plugin. And it's just, you know, even if it's something as simple as the default preset when you load it up, like I can't count to you the amount of times that I've opened up this plugin and just played something and that's found its way into a song because I just, you know, it just sounded that good out of the box and I just got inspired straight away, which I think is a little bit, this is a different conversation we can have in another video, but that is very important to me, especially now with all of these features and all of these plugins that we have at our disposal, that aspect of being inspired gets lost a little bit. I'm not gonna lie, but no matter like this plugin came out like 2019, 2020, um, still holds up in terms of that. And if anything, it does it better than any of the other ones. Any clean or crunch tone that you've heard on any of my songs has pretty much come from um, the Pliny plugin. And again, that just comes from me wanting to get a good tone quick and just opening up the plugin, needing to do very like little things to it. And it sounds almost exactly how I imagined it in my head out of the box, like it's insane. However, 
On the other hand, I can recognize that by today's standards and the other plugins that newer DSP have released, yes, the Pliny is a little bit outdated. I think it is getting an update, whether it's in like the next month or two months, maybe after this video is dropped, you see a plugin update because I know that they're doing one. Whether it gets those features or not, I'm not sure. However, I do recognize that it is a little bit dated in that sense. However, again, it is a personal tier list. I have a lot of attachment to this plugin and I think it sounds phenomenal and it inspires me, which is the most important thing. So I'm gonna pop this one in S tier. And that's it, that's my newer DSP tier list. So let's just go over it super quick. So again, S tier, like absolute top of the range for me personally, things that I would buy straight away if I didn't own it are Fort and Nameless, the Archetype Nolly, the Parallax and the Pliny. You might notice straight away that these plugins aren't amongst the newest offerings. Like it doesn't have like all the doublers and the stereo effects and stuff like that. Truthfully, because you know, those are great quality of life features. I don't use them as often as maybe someone else does, but in terms of like how much I use them, how much they inspire me, how many records they've been on um, and their impact on just the general plugin market as a whole, these for me are the S tier newer DSP and plugins. Now that I'm looking at the A tier and I'm looking at the B tier, I'm gonna make some changes because I feel like the B tier is a very like just broad kind of thing. But now that I'm looking at them, there are definitely amps that don't compare to other ones in this one. So for that reason, I'm gonna put Gojira in A and I'm also gonna put, uh, hmm. I'm gonna put Tim Henson in A actually. It was a toss up between the Dark Glass and the Tim Henson to put into A, but. I'll go through it now. So the A tier now consists of Fort and Cali, Archetype Petrucci, Archetype Gojira, and Archetype Tim Henson. I'll start off with the Tim Henson and the Gojira first. The reason why I pulled these out of the B tier is again, because when I compare them to all these other ones, and I'm a big fan of how they sound, but in context of like, you know, when they release and stuff like that, like the vocoder in this and just the sheer brutality and like the sound, like the 5150 sound that you get out of the Gajira. Um, and it has all the extra features as well, which I forgot to mention. Like it has phases and flanges and stuff like that in it as well. Um, it has a lot. So I'm gonna put this one in A tier and this Gojira plugin, in my opinion, is the closest thing from, you know, getting like clean crunch, high gain and lead tones all in one plugin when compared to something like the Nolly. Like, the Gajiri is in a very close second place when compared to that. And then the Petrucci and the Fort and Cali. The Fort and Cali for me is like one of those plugins where it's gonna sound good pretty much no matter what you do it. You get a lot of versatility from how the amp reacts to your playing. You can dial in again, like the low thump kind of region. You can dial in where the presence sits in the higher regions of your distortion and stuff like that. Like you can get super into it. Combine the fact that this has all the Fort and pedals. And one thing I didn't mention, which I'll mention now is that for some reason, the noise gates like inbuilt within the plugin at the top of the plugin in the Fortin plugins in particular are way stronger than any of the other ones. I love the way that that noise gate feels. If it was up to me, I would put that noise gate that's at the top of the Fortin plugins in every single one. Like for example, the threshold in the Nolly like seems to be a little bit more open. Like I still hear some string noise even when I'm down at like negative 30 dB. Whereas with the Fortin stuff, like I hit negative 45 and I hear nothing. And that's exactly what I want. So again, all of those are in the A tier. Moving on to the B tier, we have the Archetype Abasi, Archetype Rabia, Dark Glass, Archetype Tom Morello, and the Soldano. All fantastic AMP plugins. They all do exactly what they're meant to do, just as well as any of the other ones in any of the other tiers. I just don't use them as often. And again, in some certain plugins in this kind of listing, there are some quality of life features missing. Or for example, the Tom Morello, like if you want that Marshall JCM 800 sound, that is it, right? But like, that's all you get kind of thing. So versatility, what I would buy if I didn't have any, that's why I'm putting them in the B tier. In the C tier, we have the Omega Granifier, the Mesa Boogie Suite and the Tone King. Again, nothing wrong with these amps in particular or these plugins. I just don't use them that often. And I feel like sometimes they're a little bit forgotten amongst all of the listings that they've offered so far. And then lastly, and what would seem like it would be least, but it, absolutely not. Cause again, sound is on an issue. I've got the Corey Wong and the NTS in D tier. I just don't use them at all pretty much. I can appreciate them for what they are. Um, they both sound phenomenal for their purposes and what they do, but again, I barely ever touch them. So that's why they're in my D tier. So there you have it. That is my newer DSP amp plugin tier list. Now feel free to attack me in the comments. Um, I'm not gonna read them anyway, so go ham. That is a lie. I will read every single one and not sleep at night. If you guys wanna see any Neuro DSP video that I've done on the channel, you can go on my channel and literally type up Neuro DSP and it will all pop up in front of you. Um, you can see my stuff on their channels. If you wanna get a more in-depth kind of view on any of these plugins in particular, there's definitely videos on my channel with that kind of deep dive, every single feature 
amongst all of these plugins. What do you guys think? What's your favorite new DSP plugin? Let me know in the comments below. If you like this video at any time, please feel free to leave a like and a comment on anything you saw or heard. And if you wanna see more of this stuff, definitely think about subscribing. If you wanna support me directly, you can check out things like Patreon, Stems, Tabs, DIs, all that stuff will be in my description below, as well as all my affiliate links, the web store, merch, Instagram, Facebook, blah, 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 blah. Everything like that is gonna be down in the description below. But until next time, I'll catch you guys later. Thank you so much for watching. Ciao.